Danny Skira for MMAJunkie.com, and I'm joined today by one of the most well-known managers today in combat sports, according to G Durinho Burns, the most handsome uh, manager in MMA media today. Uh, first of all, Ali, how you doing? How's it been? Um, good time. Good time to be uh, head of Dominance MMA, huh? Man, um, uh, first, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's, it's a good time, man. You know, this time, we have to remain humble, and we have to keep working hard and... Uh, keep ourselves tame, you know, because sometimes you know, with this, all these guys winning, you know, having won a, lost the title fight in three years, everybody doing so well, and I'm, I'm so grateful to have this, so many amazing athletes I work with, they're, they're great human beings, you know, but, you know, uh, we, it's a good time right now for us. For sure, yeah, and um, obviously we're coming off UFC 261, a massive pay-per-view where uh, Kamaru Usman defended his title once again, picking up a huge victory over Jorge Masvidal, a beautiful second-round knockout. So uh, let, let's talk about that because that was pretty monumental. Your reaction to Kamaru Usman's finish over Jorge Masvidal? First, let's, let's say this. Kamaru Usman, number one. Kamaru Usman is the pound for pound, the best fight in the world today. It's number one. Number two, Kamaru Usman... Is the greatest well the greatest world to wait for all the time. 14 fight winning streak, barely lost any round, never lost in the UFC. Number three, Kamaru is one of the best strikers in the in the welterweight division. Last four fight, three knockouts against a very, very good opponent, right? Uh, number four, Kamaru Osman have big power. I believe if this punch landed on a horse, it would have knocked him out. Doesn't matter who. Doesn't matter who's at the end of this punch where I got knocked out. That's simple as that. Yeah. You think uh you think Usman has surpassed GSP? I mean, that seems to be the, the talk, right? That Usman's uh, obviously having a great career right now, but uh, a lot of people still see the GOAT as, as GSP, right? He's uh, done so much as well. Um, you yes. think he's done enough with this uh latest uh, title defense to, to surpass him? Listen, love George, respect him, huge fan, friend of mine, but George have two losses in the UFC. Kamaru never loses. George have a lot of close fight. Kamaru, even a close fight, he ended up knocking people out at the end of the fight, right? Only one time. He's very dominant. He's more dominant than George was, right? And he's a lot more exciting than George was. And, you know, it's an opinion, but the numbers show Kamaru Usman is the greatest welterweight of all the time. It's yeah. not even close. That's what I think. And, and let's talk about the fight itself. A lot of people thought, okay, uh, definitely Kamaru Usman should be the favor entering that second fight with Jorge Masvidal. I mean, he, he has a win over him, right, entering the fight. Um, but maybe with a full camp, we'll see a little bit more competitive the bout. But it, it obviously wasn't that. It turned out to be a spectacular highlight reel finish for Kamaru Usman. I know you believe a, a lot in Kamaru Usman. You think he's the GOAT. But, but did you expect that? Because... Nobody, nobody has put away Masvidal like that in years. I think the last time he was finished like that, it was in back in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. First, I, um, you know, leading up to the fight, I wasn't a really big fan. A lot of the stuff Masvidal said, but I have mm -hmm. to give it to him. I have to give it to him. Uh, he motivated all of us. And the way he handled himself after the fight, I was shocked. I never thought he would handle himself uh, after the fight like that. And massive respect the way he handled himself uh, after the fight. And uh, it, the guy is a, he's a real fighter. I believe he's a guy, he will fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. We have to give him that. Two days before the fight, I talked to Dana White, you know, and I saw the match with Trevor Whitman. The work that he was doing was Kamara, and I started seeing Kamara's footwork because I haven't seen him in a while um, training. And, uh, and I told Dana Kamara was going to knock him out. And Dana almost smiled at me. And I said, okay, we'll see. And uh, Kamara go out there and he delivered. He knocked him out. I believe Kamara, his last four opponents, he knocked out three, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't believe he can knock people out, you're a fool. Uh, he put on a spectacular performance. He went to the opponent backyard. He silenced all the fans, silenced all the haters. Uh, he's the Usain Bolt of the welterweight because he's mm -hmm. so fast. He's lapping people, lapping people like like a track star, and nobody can catch him. And uh, that's why I say he's the goat of this division. 
Certainly, he's he's been killing it, and, and I was telling people, it feels like we're watching something special here, right? This is not just an order, ordinary good fighter. Like, Kamaru Usman is reaching levels of greatness that um, maybe maybe surprise some people, maybe not, but certainly there's no doubt that he's he's entering that GOAT conversation. Um, I know it's kind of hard to tell, but more or less, I mean, you, you've been around him for, for so long. What's the ceiling on him? Because we thought he was this good, then he joins Trevor Whitman, and all of a sudden, as you mentioned, his striking is looking super sharp, and he already had that power. So all of a sudden, not only is he a, a dangerous fighter when it comes to wrestling, but all of a sudden, he's turning into one of the most dangerous strikers today. Listen, Kamara always have great coaches, but now it's evolution. You know, it's getting better, getting more weapon. He's more weaponized now than ever. And he's an athlete, man. And listen... He, he's a, a humble, he put down his head in the gym and he work, you understand? This man have no ego, he have nothing. He just go on there and do his work and leave. He's the guy you always see in the gym doing extra work. This is Kamaru Osman is. And as a champion, this level is hard to be motivated, right? But this man, he's motivated by one thing, by greatness. And uh, he enriches greatness. And I feel we have not seen the best Kamaru Osman yet. Uh, I feel we're going to see a better version of him. I feel nobody can touch him right now. And uh, at this moment, he's the best. And nobody can even argue he's not the best. Now, let's talk about what uh, what follows next. I think everyone's dying to know what's next, what's next. Dana White said Colby Covington should be next. That's who's in line for the next title shot. Kamar Usman didn't seem too keen on it. Obviously, he's always been a guy that fights anybody and will never run from a challenge. But um, he kind of feels like he already put that one to bed and, and he doesn't need to prove again that um, he's better than, than, than Colby. Um, what do you think? Uh, is Colby next in line? You know what? You have to love Dana White. Uh... You know, he hate Kobe so much. He want to see Kamaru just put him into his career, right? And uh, you have to love him because I know Dana doesn't like this guy. But at the end of the day, uh, Kobe fought three times in the last three years. Kamaru fought three times in the last ten months. When Kamaru broke this clown jaw, Kamaru went and defended his title three times. Kobe went and fought a guy he's not even in the UFC anymore and beat him by an injury, right? Kobe doesn't deserve nothing. You got guys like Michael Kessa, he's on a four fight winning streak. Vasanti Lucas on a four fight winning streak. Marvin Vittori can beat Israel Alasania. Kamaru might go ahead and fight Marvin Vittori, right? Definitely. If Kobe's willing to go sell his mother's house, sell his car, and give his 100% of his purse to Kamaru and come up with $3 million, yeah, we'll fight him. You know? But, you know, it's a big fight, yeah. Because a guy who put on a show is a fake show. Uh, you know, a guy who is not a really man talking about people's wives and families. He's crossing the line, Connor crossing, right? And I think, mm -hmm. you know, the people who cross, and we crossed us. We know what we did to him in the, in the palm, and he called the cops. Also called the cops on their doom. He's not a real, he's not the guy who said he is. But we... We're getting away from this kind of stuff, like beat people up, street fight, and all this kind of stuff, because when you reach a certain level, we don't need to do that. Kamar Osman have to go argue with people, fight with people, to just, to just get fights, because nobody will fight him. Kobe Covington, Sean Shelby is not a liar. He told me, he have it on record, he turned him down four to six times, at least, right? Now, why he think he deserve it? His privilege? Or he's Mr. America? No, he's not. He's not privileged. He's on a Kamaru Osman time now. He's going to do what Kamaru wanted him to do, right? I don't think he deserves it, but listen, it's a business about selling fight. And we always, us in the UFC, do great business behind closed doors. And if this fight, if this is the next fight, okay. But Kobe have to give a lot of stuff out of his own pocket because if he won this fight, that's what I think. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like um, willing willing to take the fight, but you don't really think he's he's the I'm next opponent in line. Fight. I just don't okay. think he deserves it. I think yeah. Kobe should go fight uh, somebody else. He was off for Gilbert. He was off for Leon Edward. He was off for a lot of guys, and he turned it down. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know he's he doesn't he doesn't deserve anything. You understand? He doesn't deserve anything. Listen, Dana White is the greatest promoter of all the time. 
he knew this is a big fight, right? But did I think Kobe deserved it? I want to see fight Kamaru make for Kamaru great, right? Who really yeah. knocked this guy out? It was a good fight. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from Kobe. The guy can fight. But he is the, one of the worst human beings I've ever seen in my life. And I don't think people like that should have this kind of opportunity, especially when they sit on one win and don't fight for a year and they expected a title shot. And you have other guys who are busting their ass and fighting every three, four months. Why he deserve it? Yeah. You know? But it's a business. I understand where is Dana coming from. I respect Dana and everybody know that. I'm not going against his word or anything like that. But at the end of the day, Kobe have to do something for it. He can't, he can't just be like, I'm fighting Kamara Osman next. Yeah. So you don't think he deserves it. So ideally, if, if you have to find somebody, the next title challenger, who do you think, well, in your not? opinion, Listen, that should be? Why not Michael Chiesa? Michael Chiesa, four-fight winning streak. Mm -hmm. Why not Vasanti Lucas? He has three-fight winning streak, right? Yep. Why not these guys? Why Kobe? What Kobe? Because he go around talking about people's wives and people's families. We have to reward him. This is how the sport to become. You know, everybody follow the punk Conor McGregor suit. You know, because all those guys, they punks. They, they're not really, man. I think Cody, Cody's more punk because he calls the cops. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, man, it's, we, we, we'll figure it out. But Kamal right now, is, he's just having fun, enjoying his daughter, enjoying his family. And he has he have a say so into this, you know? Mm -hmm. And simple as that. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, you briefly mentioned that, you know, maybe take the, take on the winner between Adesanya and, and Vittori, right? Maybe not Adesanya. No, no, I know they're boys. On. Just be a quick. Kamaru will never fight Adesanya. Like yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I yeah, want to say that. Vittori, you know, Marvin Vittori win, and I believe he's going to beat Israel Adesanya. Kamaru can go up and fight. Marvin, yeah. You, know? you think that's possible? Kamaru 185 at, at some point? Not, you know, not, not? not throwing any particular Perfect. opponent out there, but uh, move Why up not? and wait. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. As, as Adesanya, you know, Oh, respect him. He didn't accomplish one. Kamaru accomplished, and he went in, and uh, and he challenged for a second title. Why not? Kamaru can do it, right? Yeah, you know, he sure. beat everybody in the division, you know. But listen, it's at the end of the day, like I said, this is it's, it's a collaboration. They know why Kamaru, like everybody, have to get on the same page. And believe me, we will, and we're always gonna do what's the best for everybody. It's yeah. it's a it's a partnership, you know. And that's what's the difference sure. between us and other people. We all the time talk business behind closed doors and we get stuff done. Simple. Yeah. So we'll see what's next for Kamaru. Obviously, whatever comes next is, is big things. But r real quick, is Colby the person you dislike the most? Obviously, you're not a fan of his antics and his trash talk. I, I, I just don't. Like, listen, at the end of the day, I didn't like Masvidal's antics. But at the end of the day, like, I respect him. I can't, I can't say I don't respect him. I just don't respect him. I don't respect Kobe because now he's crossing the line, you know, talking about people's families and wives and racist stuff. He's a racist piece of shit. That's what he is. You know, excuse my language. He, he's just a racist guy. You know, if you're going to say his antic is no, it's a line. And he crossing the line every day, you know. Justin Gaethje never wanted to say nothing bad about nobody. He said he want to punch him in his face. But he's just not a good guy, you know. And guess what? This is how he brought up. This is how he think he's... He's, he's a nerd. That's what he is. He's, he's nothing but a nerd. And I don't really care about this guy, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, switching gears, and we kind of mentioned it there, uh, moving up to 185 pounds, Marvin Vittori is going to be challenging Israel Adesanya in a rematch at UFC 263 in June. Uh, the fight may be surprised a little bit. Obviously, uh, Vittori is in a great streak, looking very good. He's really uh, evolved, maybe just like Kamaru, you know, has changed his game and he's been looking uh, amazing in his last performances. But a lot of people thought maybe that Whitaker, a former champion, would have ended up fighting at Adesanya. Can you talk about a little bit of, of the making of that fight? Listen, time is everything. I think Whitaker was the number one contender. I, I don't think Whitaker uh, can fight this early. Israel is, you know, as a champion. That's what champion do, right? Defend their title. And yep. Israel said, you know what? I'll fight Marvin uh, June 12th. I got to command Israel because let's be real. Who, who gave him the toughest fight is Marvin Vittori. It was a split decision. Lost Marvin. Marvin was a 23 years old punk. That's what he was. He wasn't professional. Uh, now he have Rafael Cordero, one of the best mind in MMA. He's been training with him for the last three years. 
He's 27 now. Now, now Israel is 32, he's 27. And uh, I believe if anyone can beat Israel, I respect Israel. And uh, I, I, I look up to him. I think he's the greatest middleweight of all the time, my opinion. And I think Marvin can beat him. And I, I convinced me, think Marvin will beat him. You know, but, you know, Israel is a champ for a reason. We have to give him the respect. And all we need to do now, go there and just show why Marvin can be the champion and he will be the champion. I truly believe stylistically, I think is the hardest fight for Israel, you know? Uh, and, you know, and that's, that's about it. Yeah, for sure. And, and certainly after watching what Yan Blahovich was able to do to Israel Adesanya, you have to wonder what, uh, what Marvin Vittori can do as well because, you know, he, he has the tools to implement something like that very I, similar. I to it, it's know, a good fight. Israel. It's a good fight. I love Israel. But Israel will be beating up my guys. He beat Brett Tavares, Derek Johnson. He beat Calvin. He's been going through my guys and he owed me one. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing but love for Israel. He's, he's a really good guy and I, and I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, for sure. And uh, now switching gears, um, you were all over Twitter. I don't know if you've noticed in the, in the last maybe uh, 14, 15 hours. Uh, news broke that John Jones, obviously a former UFC light heavyweight champion, is no longer with first round management. And immediately I just started seeing on Twitter your name be thrown around. I, I know you don't like to discuss business and you keep that for uh, sort of behind the scenes. But uh, any interest? Did you hear of the news and any interest of potentially working with, with John Jones? Listen. Uh, I really, honestly, I, I, you know, I, I think John has been representing himself for the last three years anyway. I'm, but uh, I don't know why this news is late. Uh, listen, it's not on my business. Mm -hmm. Who John has managed, who not managed. I, I know I got tagged so many times on Instagram and Twitter. I'm flattered. I'm honored. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, I wish nothing but the best for John Jones. I think John is a good guy. He's misunderstood a lot. And I hope... Dana White is not this hard to work with. I'm telling you, I've been knowing this man for 17 years, but you can, somebody with John Jones caliber and his mystique, you know, one of the greatest ever, he should not have to argue over Twitter about what he deserves, what not he deserves, right? You know, you don't talk business online. You understand? Listen, Dana White is undefeated. One of the biggest troll we ever seen. He's undefeated in public feud, right? John Jones is one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. He is a legend. Like, I'm beyond a legend. And I believe, listen, all these guys deserve a lot more money. It's fine. If you think you deserve it, sit down with Dana White, you and him, shut everyone out, and talk to him, right? If you, you might agree, you might disagree, right? But at the end of the day, big, big, Big business get done behind closed doors. Big business doesn't get done in the media, right? And it make me sad. It make me sad. I know John. I know his coaches. I know everybody. You know, does John deserve to get paid? Yes, one hundred percent. You know, how much is not how much. This is something can figure it out, right? It's a negotiation, right? Mm -hmm. Sometime, I never left the table a UFC negotiation when I was not happy, right? Both sides have to be happy because if both sides not happy, it will never be good. And, you know, I feel for John Jones, but if I will give him an advice, get offline, get on a plane, go to dinner with, with Dana, and sit down and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. Dana's easy to talk to. People think Dana's this monster. He's actually he's a really good dude. And John is a good dude. Just when two good people sit down together, if you told me Dana White doesn't respect John Jones, you think you? I think you're crazy. I think he is. The fight to make is him, Prince Francis Ngannou. This fight can do at least 1.5 million pay-per-view buys, right? Make yeah. a deal, performance deal, right? If I, you know, and I think so much money for everybody, and and I hate to see this fight not happening. I think that Francis deserve a big fight. I think John Jones definitely earned the title shot. And I believe, and Dana have a lot of good level-headed people around him too. Hunter is level-headed. Make is level-headed. If Dana's upset, somebody else can jump and make the deal. But Dana's the boss. He's the shot caller. You can 
go and talk bad to him and he talk bad to you and he's lying, he's saying this, he's saying this. Realistically, you a goat and you deserve better than fighting with people online. You know, I wish nothing but the best for John. Um, and, uh, and you know, I'm flattered my name come up, but I think John is the only person who can help John is John. You know, everybody think I can do magic. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I, people even, they say, I hate Ali Abdulaziz so much, but I think he can help John. Yeah. Of, of course, if I can help anybody, I will help them. I help guys I don't even manage. George St. Pierre, when he come back, I flew on a private plane with Dana White to meet him. It was Ari Manuel to get a deal done. I didn't make a dollar off George. George probably made $10 million. But I love George, and I was involved. It was an honor to help George and PA, right? Uh, Sean, John know, my, John know my number. You know, I'm sure you have a great team around him, great people advising him. But if any advice, I will be more than happy to advise John uh, out of respect. You know, it doesn't have to be oh, I want to sign John John, I'll be his manager. At the end of the day, hey, I never invite myself to a party. You know, if somebody wants to invite to that party, we can talk. But I wish him nothing but the best. And I wish Dana to just sit with him and to talk to each other. They can sit in the room. Dana hated Kamaru at one point. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Like yeah, a lot of people forget. This is but what yeah. managers do. My job is to make a piece between a fighter and a promoter. A lot of these managers out there, the UFC talk a lot of shit behind, to me. I never take it to the fighter. But a lot of the managers do, bro, they say this about you and this and this and this. They say you this, bro, got your back. To give you a security blanket, but it's fake. But what they do, they create chaos between everybody. And at the end, they don't the get screwed, right? For all these young manager out there, if the UFC talk shit about your fighters, don't tell your fighter. Just keep it between on them. Because fighters have to deal with a lot of demons, a lot of training, yeah. a lot of mental stuff, right? Fighter doesn't need though. He pay me. Listen, you work for the fighter. I work for the fighters. Everybody think I'm the superstars. And... No, 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 no. I buy groceries. I was massaging Kamara fight week. I was make sure he fed. I clean his room. I'm telling you, I did that. And I do it for everybody. If a guy make 10 and 10, I'll do it for him. Everybody think I'm just this Don King. Not, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm telling you, I get beat up by guys when I'm training with them. You think I want to get beat up by Kamaru or Gechi or Khabib? No, but it's part of my job and I love it. Yeah, for sure. And, and be honest, how bad were your mentions? Because, you know, I, you know, I'm not Ali Abdelaziz, but I was just looking at the timeline and it was pretty crazy how, how often your name was getting tossed around. Bro. I w I'm going to say the truth. I went on John Jones' post, and I think 90% of the comments, my name was involved somehow. And <laughs> I am so flattered. And all people said they hate me, but they want to see me help John. And guess what? You know what? John is John, man. I think John, is the, he's a legend. He's, the, he's a legend. And I think uh, things should be handled differently for sure. John should not have to talk to anyone about how much he's making. This is somebody's job and uh, should be doing it. But, you know, it is what it is, man. It's just, yeah. uh, I wish, listen, I know there's a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of drama between managers and this. I wish nothing but everyone by the best. I have no hate towards anybody. Uh, I have no beef with anybody. If somebody want to bring beef to me, it's different. Everybody know how I handle things. And I want to get away from this ways, but I got no beef with nobody. And, and I hope everyone that was, I hope everybody make, I hope John Jones make a hundred million dollars. And I hope all this manager make a hundred million dollars. And one of the things we so bad, like if we are united, we all good with each other is so much better for everyone, but so much hate, there's just so much hate. And, and I'm tired of beating up people and fighting with people. And have to go pay a lawyer uh, 25 grand to get me out of trouble. I'm done with that. I'm, I'm taking a completely different route. But don't touch me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We'll see what happens with John Jones. I think everyone really wants to see him fight Francis Ngannou and go for the heavyweight title. As you said, you know, a legend and a huge fight for the sport. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there.
Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, if even John don't fight Francis, go fight Stipe. Kill one fight on your contract. Yeah. Why not? Listen, John Jones, no one can doubt him. You know, the man never lost. You know, like, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely he's going to go down one of the greatest for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I know we, we've, uh, we're going long here, but I, I want to ask you a couple of things before we go. Uh, John Morgan, my colleague, did a great job at, at talking to you a few weeks back. Uh, so there's a lot of updates that you gave on him uh, for, for other fighters. But I want to ask you about a couple of fighters that uh, we, we haven't uh, talked about here at MMA Junkie with you. Uh, Frankie Edgar, what's the latest with him? Can you give us an update on him? Maybe very exciting news? Frank, yeah, Frank just have a hip surgery. Okay. Uh, you know, I, this guy is killing me. He's like, I'm coming back with a vengeance. And listen, I love that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you something. One thing I will never do, doubt Frankie. I don't doubt Frankie. Uh, I want to make a statement today on, with you. Kayla Harrison, I'm telling you this today, she will go down in history the goat of female fighting. Period. I'm going to tell you something. This girl, the stuff she do to grown men, I see it with my own eyes. I don't get submitted by people much. I train with her, she catch me with an arm bar. And I never get caught in an arm bar, right? I'm telling you, she's something special. I believe she's on her way to be the GOAT. She's gonna smash everyone in the PFL tournament. She is no competition for her. And she will rise. Uh, and I think she's the best talent I've ever seen inside this, this, this cage, female, female talent. Yeah. Well, now, now that you mentioned, I saw you uh, threw that out on Twitter when Valentina Shevchenko defended her, her title. And obviously, Shevchenko, Nunes, huge names. Uh, and Kayla Harrison shows tons of promise. Obviously, great pedigree and has been undefeated, looking great. Um, I guess this is, I talked to her a few weeks, a month ago or a couple months ago. And uh, she told me that this is her last season with PFL. Um, obviously, she's been looking great. Do you think she's ready to take on uh, maybe a, a level above and, and take on some, I don't know, maybe a cyborg in Bellator after the season or head over to the UFC? Do you think she's ready for that kind of step up? Listen, PFL been great to her. They've been yeah. great to me. I'm, I'm, you know, who saved the last season? Listen, at the end of the day, it's a business, right? Right. BFL I mean, in the current class. They don't great business move. She's going to become a free agent, but realistic, hey, we keep continuing renew a contract with PFL because they they pay a hefty bill and, yep. and Kale is not cheap and guess what they have the money you know and I I, I, I am a fan of PFL five minutes in the format and Kayla love fighting you know she's custom to the tournament format from judo but at the end of the day I'm I work for Kayla yeah. and I'm gonna do what Kayla wants you know this is this is my master and I'm the genie in the bottom. You understand all you got to rub on my head and I'll come <laughs> out and I said, what do you want me to do? But yeah. listen, the focus right now, going through smashing all these young ladies, this figure they face, and after that, move on. You see how when you use elbows and Invicta, you see oh, the yeah. blood bath, mm -hmm. what you can generate, right? PFL doesn't have elbows, but I get it. But, you know, we, we just have to focus on the season. It's a great season. PFL doing a great things. I commend them, and I want to see them succeed and go forward and give opportunity like they're doing. Yeah, for sure. And, and I meant more, um, maybe not on, on on everything considered as far as uh, you know uh, her her tenure in PFL and all that, because I know PFL also appreciates her a lot, and she's become a face for that promotion as well. So I'm sure, obviously, they're treating she's her the face well. of the promotion. She yeah, there's nobody else. You know, listen, that has come in. They tried to make him the face, but you know, stuff happened and, and I like the kid, you know. But she's homemade, homemade champ. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Listen, and uh she's gonna be good. Verdum is coming back, you know. I, I favor him to win this title. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's gonna be interesting couple of weeks for PFL. It's gonna yeah. be nice. Yeah. yeah. For, for Kayla, I meant more like on a skill level wise, right? Because I mean, she she's fairly new to the sport, but she already has a lot of fights logged in, and it feels like again she made one forty five, as you mentioned, for Invicta, had some nice we elbows. That, we did that for a reason, my brother. Yeah, we could have did a catch with one fifty. You know, you know, I don't spoil people. Coil don't want nobody spoiled. We just went to make a point, and we went there, and we she almost came. She went. She should have went into jail after this fight. <laughs> um, they, they were the district attorney of Kansas City to press charges against him. But I got my lawyer and we got out of jail free card. 
certainly it, it was a one-sided beating. You can't argue that. Um, and real quick, last one. Um, he's not on the headlines often, but I do have a, a soft pot, a spot for him because I think he's a phenomenal talent. And I miss him. I miss him over in mixed martial arts. Tyrone Spong, what's going on with him? Um, Listen, Tyrone Spong, um, you know, he, he just have a surgery on his arm. We okay. are working on some stuff for him. I believe Tyrone Boxing Spong, or MMA? I, I, I'm going to tell you something. Tyrone Spong is nobody. He's no McGregor. He's no Khabib. He have charisma like him. He's no one can fight like him. Is no one is built like him. I'm going to tell you something. talk about lion. If you're going to fight an army, that's who you take with you. You take with script. He's a beast. Yeah. And we're working on some stuff with him. Uh, possibly some stuff in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they have a lot of great things going on. And we should know soon what we're going to do with our own spot. Okay, looking forward to that because uh, obviously, you know, he's been killing it in boxing. Uh, obviously, a kickboxing legend already. And in MMA, he, he did quite well. But so, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I uh, talked with one FC and uh, with Chatri. We yeah. almost had a deal done, but, you know, you know, we didn't, it was close, but, you know, uh, financially have to make a lot of sense for him, you know. And I'm not saying one FC doesn't have money because they have a lot of money, but I think Tyrone Spong uh, deserves a little bit more what we was going to get. But, you know, um, listen, I'm, I, we work with everybody. We have a great relationship with everybody. And I'm grateful for every promoter out there who put their money on the line and platform. And we're going to continue conquering this game by Sorry. hard work, dedication, and respect. Yeah. All right, Lee. Well, I appreciate the time. Uh, thank you so much. I know you're a busy man. Appreciate all the all the info that you gave us today, and uh, best of luck in in what's coming. Because I know with uh, that big of a roster, you're you're always uh, you're always busy. So uh, uh, all the best, man, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thank you.